Greetings Earthlings and welcome to the final part, the fourth part of an introductory thing to my latest book thing, Weird, Wild and Wonderful. The words are by, or me, the illustrations, my gosh ladies and gentlemen I've got to tell you about this haven't I, it's illustrated by Good Egg and illustrator extraordinaire Neil Layton. In this last part I'll be reading two poems I might even have a little bit more of Eric the Disco Ukulele, maybe even, you never know. Maybe in a bit of Steve, depends on what I'm in the mood for. Anyway, so there's going to be two poems. I might talk about how I wrote them, and then we'll finish off, and then we'll say goodbye. Are you ready? I can't actually hear you, but I'm assuming you'll say, you're saying, get on with it. Okay, get on with it. So, there we go. A poem from Weird, Wild and Wonderful, illustrated by. She watches the world. She watches the world through star gold eyes, with awe, but mostly suspicion. She'll sniff at the air, she'll wait, she'll listen. She'll sense the slightest footfall. She'll skulk through the night in her old winter coat beneath an ocean of sky. She'll leap over snow with limbs as fleet as the wind's invisible wings. She'll follow the promise of even the wisp of a meal. Here in my dreams, those darkest woods, nothing bewitches me more than her, that great grey rock. I wrote this poem for a number of reasons, actually. I've written loads of poems, lots and lots of poems about wolves. I'm absolutely obsessed with these gorgeous creatures. I've written a non-fiction book about wolves, but I'd never felt that I'd really written a poem which I described what it is to be a wolf moving through space and time and I wanted to describe a wolf and also because for National Poetry Day, oh yes, um, the theme for this year was vision and I thought oh I could do a workshop poem thing, I'll do a poem at the workshop in which I talk about an animal then get children to to, to write their own animals um, and so it took me about I don't know two three months of just scribbling away and the early versions and nothing like this it, it, it took a lot of work. I, I really wasn't happy with the first few things. It just, it just seemed a bit ordinary and obvious. And so I just kept going, refining and tweaking and chucking stuff out until I eventually got to this one. And then I sent it to those lovely humans at National Poetry Day, when I can find the thing, oh yeah, under here. And uh, they put it up on their website. Um, so if you, go, if you Google National Poetry Day, she watches the world. There's a, there's a little workshop there so that you can write your own wild animal um, poems if you wish. You're very welcome to. Um, so yeah, and just to finish, something completely different. I think we'll have a little bit of Steve, the, the melodica, to introduce this. From something serious man, atmospheric man, to something also from... Did I tell you about this? I'm sure I did, but just in case. Weird, wild and wonderful. It's a lullaby. No. No. Ladies and different peeps. Lullaby for a woolly mammoth. Woolly mammoth, hear me sing. Go to sleep, you hairy thing. You can snooze outside my door, just so long as you don't snore. Come on, Shaggy, shut your eyes. Now it's time for Betty Boys. Good night, listeners. Sweet dreams. Thank you for listening and watching. Goodbye.